What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Well, Mr. Orlando here with some more English stuff. Edgenuity has you learning about a ton of important concepts very quickly in the first two days. So I'm making some mini lessons to help you out, okay? The first concept that I'm gonna talk about is plot because it is a framework in which we can discuss other things, okay? So you've probably seen a plot diagram that looks like this. Yes. This is a plot diagram, but it's also terrible. It is a lie. It is not very helpful. I am going to try to explain this to you in a way that actually makes sense. You know that this is the shape of a story, but what you might not know is that this line actually has a purpose. It doesn't exist in a vacuum. It's not meaningless, okay? What it does mean is that this line is tension. This line is conflict. This line is um, the excitement in a story, okay? So when the story starts off, not a lot of excitement. As the story continues, more excitement. And then we get to the highest point or our climax, and we have the most excitement and then this leveling off. But it doesn't really make a lot of sense if you think about it, okay? Most stories that you watch um, or read or whatever, they don't actually do this. Take like Star Wars, for instance, episode four. It starts with that big, like boring crawl of like yellow words that nobody reads. That could be considered the beginning of the story, but it's really not, right? The first thing that we see is action. The first thing that we see is, you know, lasers and boom and ships and they're, you know, chasing each other through space. We don't know why it's happening, but we know that it's happening. And so it's interesting, it's exciting. There's you know, something going on on the screen. It's conflict, right? So our story actually starts like this. We have excitement and then we slow down and learn about Luke Skywalker and the Force and Leia and all that. And then we get our rising action where they're going and meeting Han Solo and fighting the bad guys. And then we get the fight at the Death Star and then everybody comes back and, you know, parties and they all get medals and whatever. Okay, spoiler alert, but you know, the movie's like 40 years old. So if you haven't seen it by now, get with the program. This is what your actual plot diagram for episode four looks like. So why do we teach like this? Why is that, why is that what we do? Um, oh, hello, bell's done. Okay, go home. Aha, you're already home, you can't escape. This is conflict, but we can learn about how to identify different structures in the story, and we can learn about how to identify different character experiences in the story by following this diagram. So normally it's labeled like this, right? We have our exposition, our rising action, our climax, our falling action, and finally our resolution. I know that's kind of small and my handwriting is terrible, but you should be able to see this on your screen anyway, because you have it on Edgenuity. Okay, not gonna play that game anymore. This is technically how um, your plot diagram is gonna be labeled. Exposition is when we get to meet and greet our characters. Our rising action is the events as they progress through the story towards our climax. Then our falling action comes after the point of highest tension, okay? The climax is the most exciting, most high tense moment of the story. And then our resolution is when the story finally ends. That doesn't mean all of the conflicts are ended. That doesn't mean the story stops, okay? As we know from, you know, the new Star Wars movies, a story could still continue. There are still bad people that wanna hurt people. There are still characters who haven't gotten what they wanted. The story hasn't completely ended, but the resolution means that the conflict that we've been following has ended, okay? The conflict that we've been following has stopped. Another really good example of this um, popular culture is Megamind. Megamind is a story that starts out with him falling through the sky to his death, presumably. That is obviously high conflict. That's obviously something that um, would inspire you to go, what is happening, right? And then halfway through the story, we get a resolution. What does he want? He wants to rule the city. Well, what does he get halfway through the story? He rules the city. He wins. That's the end of the movie. Go home, folks. Okay, bad guy won, right? That could be the end of the f end of the film, but they don't stop there, right? The resolution comes in the middle of the story and he realizes that he's not actually happy. He hasn't really found what he wants. So you could end the story there and start an entirely new movie, starting with him having already won the city and now he's going to go and create a new villain to fight, right? And he'll be the hero who takes him down, right? Whatever the situation is, 
we get our resolution halfway through that movie, and then we get another resolution at the end when he resolves his deeper issues. That is what a plot diagram is all about. A plot, generally, is a series of events that occur within the story, very broadly. But a plot diagram is really just a tool that we use to kind of understand the shape of the story and the conflict that occurs within it. Different characters can have conflicts occur at different times. They can experience this plot diagram in different ways. And if you're thinking, okay, yeah, great, Mr. Orlando, this is all fine and all, but what does it have to do with me? Well, it has to do with you because you like movies, because you read books, presumably, I don't know, comic books at least. You enjoy stories in some capacity, okay? Every story has these elements in some manner. And if you are designing a story, you must at some point consider conflict. And the plot diagram helps you understand where that conflict is going. Every single person who has worked on a film, hundreds of people, thousands of developers on video games, books, movies, are all working to storyboard and design a tale that will capture you, okay? This is why Star Wars doesn't follow this. This is boring, okay? Once upon a time, there was a kid named Luke Skywalker who lived in a desert. You're already bored. You're not gonna watch it. But if you start with a space battle, bing, bang, boom, right? Conflict, plot diagram getting all mixed up. That's interesting, that's fun. We call that in media res, but that's like a fancy Greek term you don't need to know until high school. So just impress your teachers with it later. Um, what you need to know about this right now is that this line is conflict. This is excitement. All of these, oh wow, look at that, class is over again. All of these parts are just ways for you to design a story and for you to understand a story. It's a tool and nothing more. This is not rules to follow. And despite what it looks like on Ingenuity, this is not set in stone. Stories can come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. Next lesson I talk about will be a mini lesson on character and setting, okay? So just tune in to that one if you wanna get an update on that concept as well. I hope this helped you understand the concept and um, expect more of these coming in as the lessons continue. All right, see ya.